How is everybody? Okay, you're not that good. Well, uh, you're in the right place. So hopefully uh, by the end, uh, the Lord would have spoken to you. Uh, so uh, I, I need to know, though, um, are you really ready to hear what God is going to speak to us about? Uh, the reason being is because I'm a good dude, like I'm okay, uh, but your, your father, your God, our Savior, our Lord, uh, he loves you, man. And so uh, if you've had a challenging week, I just raise your hand. Just if you had like one of those weeks that you prefer. Okay, good. So I'm in the right place. Uh, uh, we all need God, so let's settle that, right? We all need him. And uh, what I want to do is to remind you, so, it, so everything that you hear today, everything, you may not take, because I'm, I'm going to do rapid fire because we're closing the book of James. So we've been in the book of James for literally 12 weeks, and we have looked, and James has spoken to us, and uh, um, we're going to settle the matter when it comes to the book of James. But... I want you to anticipate slash expect God to speak to your particular situation. I mean, Jesus did it this way. So Jesus would go different places, and you read in your Bible that they would touch the hem of his garment. Uh, he, would, he would heal lepers. But then there were places that he would go that he did no healings. Because some people only saw... Joseph's son. So they didn't see the son of the living God. They didn't see the Messiah. They didn't see the Savior. They didn't see the, 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 the one God in the flesh. They didn't see. They only saw Joseph's son. So be careful that we don't become so familiar that we can't receive what God wants to say. And so my prayer is, if you just mind, if you don't mind closing your eyes, Lord, speak to us. Because I need you. Your people need you. So God, I pray that your word comes forth now. It comes as I decrease. In other words, I minimize who I am. I want everyone to see you glorified in the next few moments want us to hear from you. I want us to hear that you love us, you care for us, and you continually provide for us. I thank you for what's going to happen in the next few moments because you are a faithful God. And for that, we're grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Double amens. Listen, James, we're going to walk real fast. I'm going to summarize, and then we're going to get to the end of the matter. James chapter 1 talks about when we are going through problems, you and I need wisdom. Sometimes when we have problems, that's the, that's the worst time to make big decisions. Because we respond out of our hurt. We respond out of anything outside of God. So James chapter 1 starts off, when you find yourself in trouble, uh, count it all joy. Be happy. There's a song when I was growing up, you guys are too young to remember, don't worry, be happy. And uh, that song is a catchy song and it sticks in your brain. And it's do, 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 don't worry, be happy. But... Uh, hello, I got real problems. How are you telling me to not worry and to be happy? Because James says, listen, when you find yourself in trouble, count it all joy, because God can use that same trouble to help us all. So he says things like, be careful because you're also drawn away by your own lust. You want it to do wrong. Mm-hmm. You did. Uh, and it's not the devil, it's what's already in us. So to combat the desire to do wrong, he says not just be hearers of the word, but be doers. 
So this is James chapter 1. James chapter 2, he talks about discrimination and preferring one person over the other. In this particular passage, he was talking about how the rich folks would get more preferential treatment like uh, the, over the poor people. You know, it doesn't happen today, but it happened back then. And he says, be careful about that. And ironically, that was happening in the church. And so he warns about that. He also, this is very familiar, faith without works is dead. He, I'm not saved because of my works, but because I'm saved, I work. And, and so this is what he's saying. We're saved by grace through faith. James chapter 3, he says, and everybody going to say amen on this one. You can't control your tongue. Yeah, that tongue has gotten you in so much trouble. Your day started off wonderful, but you had to give the drive through lady, a piece of your mind. Because this is the third time in a row that she messed your coffee and your hash browns up, and you're not having it anymore. Why are you listening to Bethel? <clears throat> Bethel music, gospel music. Okay, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. He also speaks about how our tongue gives us direction and, 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 and it can lead to destruction. Our tongues are deadly and it actually displays what's in our heart. So this is how sometimes we don't put the work or faith in action. Uh, we'll say things like, I just got to learn how to control my tongue. Well, your tongue is actually uh, uh, speaking about what's already in your heart. So if we don't give God our heart, uh, he, he, he can't get your words either. So God works from the inside out. I don't have time to preach about that, but it'll preach. Okay, maybe it won't. Thank you. James chapter 4, he speaks about what is the roots of fight? Why do we fight? He's talking about in the church, but why do we fight? It's because we have all these selfish ambitions, self-indulgences. Uh, we, we have this passion that leads us to, I want it my way. I've been married for a wonderful, not a bad day, 19 years. Yeah, you doing like this because it's like, not a bad day in 19 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and all of our fights, if we're honest, oh, no, no, no. If I'm honest, it, it, it originates from my own heart. Sometimes I just want to be right, knowing that I'm wrong. Not just me. Okay, just me. J just me. Uh, it's James chapter 5, we dealt with last week. He, was talking about, he gives a warning to the rich. He says, listen, rich folk. You've been, you've been squandering or jeopardizing or cheating people out of their wages. That God sees you. You know how it is, guy. Not that you're rich, but a guy comes in. He says, hey, I'm going to cut your grass. I usually charge $35. And he's like, I'll give you 20 the Guy's like, oh, well, I usually charge you charge $35. i will do 30 I got 19 He says, pay fair wages. Just, just, just pay fair wages. And um, you're, 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 at, you're working your job, and they're not paying you enough, and you're struggling. God sees it. You may be the only thing that's keeping your job alive, your faithfulness to God. So he said there's a warning to the rich. And finally, James chapter 5, verse number 13. And this is where we will find our conclusion of the matter. Is anyone among you suffering? Hello. Let them pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of, the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings them back, let them know 
that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Thank you, God, for the reading of your word. So I want to deal with the first thing that James admonishes us to do. First, he says, is, if, if anyone is suffering, let him pray. So prayer is, is communicating with God. And although we know it, sometimes our suffering stops us from communicating to God. Sometimes life can get so heavy that we, talk, we, we fail to talk to the person, the one person that can eliminate and alleviate or give us strength to endure the suffering. Isn't it amazing how even in marriage that when you're struggling, instead of talking, you withdraw and turn away from each other? Like, if everything is being equal, who has your back like your spouse? You're in it together. You, you made the commitment, but suffering sometimes draws us away from God. So what is prayer? Prayer is the privilege purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ died for this end. See, yes, uh, we're about to baptize um, someone this morning, and I'm excited because Jesus Christ died for her sins, died for our sins, and he's given us access to God. But before we go to get our reward over yonder, he gives us access also through prayer. I mean, we have a creator that hears us. The privilege of prayer is missing. It's like us building a boat with the, with the crew and the sails and, it, and, and, and all these aerodynamics and engineering, but we can't make the wind blow. It's putting the seed into the ground, making sure it's good ground, watering it, but we can't make it grow. There are some things that are outside your resource. And when we come to the end of ourselves, that's when we start praying. So is suffering all bad? Because if suffering, as James chapter 1 says, we count it all joy, that the working of our faith, that the trying of our faith works patience, and let patience have her perfect work, then patience is being perfected when I'm suffering. There's nothing more challenging than having to wait. Get to the doctor's office. The doctor's appointment is at 10.30. You, like me, get there at 10 o'clock. The doctor doesn't see me till 11.30. Oh, I say some things in my mind. Because he's working on my patience. It's, it's coming to the realization that a man can't save himself. We need God to save us. So what happens when we're suffering, that's why he's saying be careful about your words. You know how it is, or well, maybe you don't, because you're not the person I'm talking to, that when we're suffering, we say some things that we end up having to take back. You get mad at someone, and you say something, and then it's not just that particular argument, it's the other thing you have to ask for forgiveness about. I didn't mean what I said, but I was angry. Well, you just told them what was in your heart. And although you were angry, and I get it, you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You only say what's there. So to put it simply, prayer is communicating with God, and none of us are exempt. Jesus, before he did anything, he prayed. So if Jesus is always praying, why are we always not? Like, you ever been in a position where you know, I mean, you know, if you put your hands on this, you're going to mess it up. But you have to do something. You just can't sit there and do nothing. I got to do something. And so what, what James is telling us, wait. Before you put your mouth on or before you put your words on, Wait. Suffering um, causes us to pray. 
So Matthew 6 and 5, Jesus says, when you pray. He doesn't say if. He says, when you pray. So we, as, as the uh, Apostle Paul says, we should pray without stopping. Every day we should pray. We should pray so much, MC Hammer wrote a song about it. You need to pray. You need to pray. You need to pray just to make it today. You don't remember that? Okay. Wow. Stick to the word, Reverend. Stick to the word. Okay. I stick to the word. Matthew 14 and 23. Jesus sends the crowd away. You know what he does? He goes up on a mountain and he prays. And, and when it was evening, he was still on the mountain by himself. You know what he did? After he went to the mountain and prayed, he walked on water. And he did it like this. That's how he did it. I, I was there. So he walked, he, he, he walked on water. Luke chapter 6, he went to the mountain to pray all night. He continued in prayer to God. And when day came, his disciples looked for him. Where you been? I've been praying. Mark 1, first, 1 and 35. Listen, he rose up early in the morning and, and, and went to a deserted place and prayed. He prayed so long, he prayed all, my grandfather, who was a Baptist preacher, would say, he prayed all night long. He prayed all night long, and the disciples, having woken up, didn't see the Savior, went looking for him, because Jesus spent his morning praying. Luke 5 and 16, before he cleansed the leper, and the news began to grow, about who he was, and that they said crowds upon crowds began to seek him out. You know what Jesus would do? He would withdraw to a private place and pray. Prayer does not inform God. Prayer involves God. When you pray, heaven moves. But it's not this... You know how we do. I'm sorry, but sometimes, you know, there's a performance of prayer. You know how we pray in crowds. We pray for the people. We try to rouse you up. But honestly, when I'm praying privately, this is how I pray. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. That's how I pray because I'm talking to my father. The words of prayer comes from the heart of the person who's praying. It's not in the words. It's not in the, in the vocabulary. It's the heart. So that's why, uh, if, you, if you notice, um, you don't, it's very rarely recorded what Jesus says doing his prayer. But we know that he prays. He prayed so much that his disciples was like, Lord, We've been watching you now for about two years. Um, we've been, and, and every time you finish praying, something happens. Man comes to you, can't see. You heal him. Woman comes with an issue of blood. She's healed. 5,000. We even saw you walking on water. So we know prayer is important. So they, like us, are curious. And he, so they ask him one question, Melanie. They asked him, thank you, they asked him, or lightweight demand, teach us how to pray. And he gives us a pattern of prayer, and now what we do as a church, we repeat the prayer, but what he was actually doing is giving us a pattern. Our Father, our Father speaks of relationship. And so you can't have a relationship with anyone you don't talk to. So prayer is the breath that the Christian breathes because it's my connection to God. So he says, when you pray, when you fail to pray, you go to the fight unarmed. No weapons. Uh, uh, when Ephesians 6 and 10 talks about what prayer is, it's a spiritual war, and, and finally be strong in, in the Lord and in the strength of his might, because he, uh, 1 Peter, I think it's 5, says the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he's going to devour. So if that's the case, prayer arms me because I'm spending time with, with God. I had a friend who was teaching me 
how to pray. And, and he literally, um, and I was waiting. I had my notebook and, and I, I blocked off the morning because this man, when he prayed, he can get an answer. So, so Missy, I, I, was, I was talking to him at a Chick-fil-A in Concord and, and I, was, I put my, my phone down and I was like, let me record this. Because this is going to be divine. He's going to teach me how to pray. He said, are you ready? I was like, yes, sir, I am. He says, I get a chair. I sit in front of me. And I just talk. I was like this. Okay. Then what? That's it. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. No. Give me the real answer. He said, Every morning, 4.30, before anybody gets up, I go down to my kitchen table. I pull my chair out. And I just invite the Lord in and I talk to him. He said, I talk to him about my worries. I talk to him about my day and how I'm hoping my day would be. And then sometimes I'm sipping on coffee just listening. Sometimes I feel him in my heart and he says... Uh, peace. Sometimes it's a, it's a Bible verse. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I feel stupid. And I tell him, Lord, I feel stupid. And he says, so there's no formula. He said, it's like me telling you how to talk to your wife. You spend time with her. And sometimes you're saying a lot without saying nothing. Sometimes it's just the holding of the hands. It's the, it's the romantic squeeze. Uh -uh. S sometimes it's just, it's the look. And I know I done made her mad. And she needs some time. Other, is, other times it's just I'm pursuing her. Girl, you look good. Look at you. It's just talking to her. And I had to get this religious mindset out of the performance of prayer it's just talking to god and you're gonna and you're gonna feel silly sometimes and it's just you're gonna feel like oh lord but i promise you the more you do it and then all of a sudden he starts to answer you back that's communicating with god we go to conference upon conference about what to pray how to pray when to pray and the truth of the matter is it's just talking to god that's all it is. And I'm sitting here like, oh my, you mean to tell me that I was standing up before the people teaching them how to pray religiously, not relationally. That if you're not careful, you will model yourself after other people who can really pray. Jesus says you won't be known for your much saying. Your vain repetitions. It's from your heart. So when you're suffering, is there anyone among you suffering? Let them pray. And then he says, is anyone cheerful? Let them sing praises. Suffering, pray. If things are going good, which means you're succeeding, you have a level of success, he says sings praise. Because if you're suffering, pray. If you are succeeding in life and, 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 and you're not struggling per se, praise. Uh, because everything you do points you, everything we should do should point back to him. I live my life in fellowship and communion with him. And, and so... Paul says it this way. I've learned when I had a lot, I was content. When my bills were met, when I didn't suffer, because actually he's talking about suffering for Christ's sake. Uh, so when I was suffering, I found myself being content. I found myself when I was succeeding, being content. Finding myself when I'm struggling, being content. No matter the condition I find myself in, I am content. The reason why I am content is because God is sovereign. That simply means he knows what's best for me. 
So if I find myself in a trial, if I find myself looking for a house because I've been evicted, if I find myself with disease, I know that he knows what's best for me. So during my problems, Tommy, I can say yay and amen. And I wait on God. And then he says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. So there's going to be many different types of people that's among us. There's going to be the ones who are suffering. There's going to be ones that are succeeding. And then he says there are going to be ones who are sick. And when you're sick, he says, petition, call for the elders, pray over. And what that suggests, there are some times in our lives we need for you to pray over me. There are some times that, no, I cannot, I'm not praying to God just for myself. There are some times there's things in my life that I need to call for the spiritual mature to pray for me. And this particular passage um, has uh, theologians and men that are way smarter than me debating whether he was talking about a physical sickness or was he talking about a spiritual sickness, what he called it, talking about between the two. Listen, I don't know. All I do know is this, that when I'm sick, I need help and I need people to pray for me because I might not have the strength to pray for myself. That's why the elevation of this stage and the platform that we build, we have to be careful because we would chase the elevation and the platform believing that this person has more power and more influence with God and the Bible doesn't say that. That's why he says, he reminds us that Elijah was just like us. And so, listen, uh, your favorite, our favorite faith healer that we've written books about, they have no power. It comes from God. And any time, any time that we worship the creation and not the creator, that's idolatry. And so we have to be careful that we don't run from conference to conference going after a man because this man will heal us. No, the Bible says call for the elders of the church, the spiritual mature, the one who has a prayer life, and God will raise him up. We're just conduits, man. Listen, I don't have any power. I know, shocking to many of you. <laughs> I have no, I have no power. All power uh, is more eloquently expressed this way. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And so we have to be careful that we don't elevate people in our mind that they got to take it to God. Don't you fool yourself. It, it's God. It's Christ alone. So, so James says, hey, call for the elders. And we call for the elders. They will pray and they will petition God for yourself. Prayer is powerful even in our sickness. God can deliver us from our sickness. But what is he trying to teach us in our sickness? The submission of God in my life means that whether I have a lot, whether I have a little, whether, I, whether I'm whole, healthy, and all those things, they pale in comparison to what's going to happen when we get our reward. So when even, even if someone comes and we heal them of cancer, the, the Holy Spirit heals them of cancer or heals them of all manner of diseases, they still going to die. The miracle is not the healing of this temporary vessel. The miracle is he's snatching us from eternal damnation. That's the miracle. And we can't idolize miracles. You can't work for healing. So I have three lines. I had a thousand dollar line. You get platinum healing. Second line is bronze. I mean, that's, that's up to sinus infections. The third is basic stuff. And we have, have mis, 
we have missed the mark in what it means to be healed. And if we're not careful, our expectations are built, our expectations of God is built on wrong reading that's from God. In other words, if everybody's going to be healed and everybody's going to be rich, then why aren't you? So now what I'm doing is I'm fighting for the evidence that God is with me. Do you know how I know and you should know that God is with you? Because he said he was. Like, that's what he said. And so the evidence of him saying that he's with us is in his word. So when we call him Emmanuel, that means God with us. And so what we have to understand is, it's our illiteracy of the word of God that's causing all these problems. But uh, that's the hallelujah corner. And I, yeah, I'm not going to say that. So, um, so yeah, so sickness, petition. Then verse number 19, my brothers, if anyone of, anyone among you wonders from the truth, somehow brings them back. Let them know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. There is the suffering. There is the succeeding. There is the sick. And finally, there is the sinner. The person who wanders. His instruction to us is to pursue. Pursue them. Bring them back into the fold. And let them know. And I promise you, here today, there are the ones who are suffering. Here today, there are ones who are succeeding. And it seems like, man, life is just, yeah. Then there's ones who are sick. I stopped praying for myself. I've almost given up. But then there's the sinner. God is relentlessly pursuing you. He's calling you. Being saved does not mean that I don't suffer. Being saved does not mean that I will have success or it's wrong to be succeeding. Being saved does not mean that I will not be sick. Being saved simply means that the Father we will meet him and we will spend eternity eternity with him so I can't have my best life now it's impossible because the word says eyes have not seen no ears have heard it's the promises of God through Christ Jesus that he's relentlessly pursuing us so thank God for pursuing us. Thank God that when we heard the word of God, we responded. Thank God that, I, that he drew me closer to him because he pursued me. And I don't have all the answers. Many questions. But he has pursued us.